Hey guys, welcome to my True Beginner's Guide to Paintball. This is for you folks that are coming out to a bachelor party, corporate event, birthday party, or maybe as a walk-on with a couple friends. When you ever come to a paintball field by yourself or with a small group that's not large enough to sustain its own specific group, you're known as a walk-on. Now, when you come to a paintball field for the first time, they're going to give you uh, the lowdown on their rules and situations like that. I'm going to try to touch on what I consider to be the, the general rules that most fields have, as, as opposed to getting into the specifics to the fields in which I play at. Uh, you're going to get three items when you show up to a paintball field. You're going to get your marker, you're going to get a mask, and you're going to get some sort of armband. And I'm going to cover all of those in this video. I'm going to make certain that when you go out for the first time, you know exactly what to expect. So let's get started. Your mask and your barrel cover are the most important factors of the day. The mask must stay on at all times which means if you're in game, it does not come off for any reason. If you fall to the ground, you keep your face in the dirt and you yell for a ref, they'll come and they'll stop the game if they have to. But the bottom line is, they will stop games if somebody takes a mask off. You do not take a mask off during a game. Don't take it off even off the field. What you want to understand is this. If the referee has their mask off, that's a good cue for you that you can take your mask off. But even then, some will simply say, until you're back in the staging area, you don't take your mask off. So make certain you understand that rule is pretty strong and pretty healthy for everybody to observe. The barrel cover. The barrel cover also should be on this anytime you're not in play. So the moment you're shot out of a game, you should barrel cover. If you call yourself out, you're out. You can't stay, stay in the game. You can't walk five feet and go, well, I don't see any paint, so I'm going to stay. No, you call yourself out, you're done. That is how it is on any field. If you have a question, you either call for a referee or have a friend check you. You call paint check. Paint check brings the referee to you check him, you give the referee a description of the bunker the person's in or, or a description of what they're wearing, some sort of descriptive, and send the ref to them. Paint check brings the referee to you, check him or check her is what sends the referee to somebody else. And believe me, people don't always hear in a paintball game. You got paintballs being shot, you get mask on you, they got a mask on, you're both 50, 60 feet away, it's really hard to hear. So sometimes I've seen best of friends get into arguments because they're saying, hey, you got paint on your head and the person's like, what? You're pointing at your face? What? I mean, get the referee to go check them. Alright, so now we've talked a little bit about the barrel cover. The barrel cover stays on, but now let's get to the safety issue. It's part of the safety issue, but not all of it. Whenever you're not in game, or whenever you're carrying your gun and you're not in game, it should be pointed at your sides. That's the habit you want to get in. Because this way, if you accidentally pull the trigger, you just shot the ground. You should also have your safety on at all times as well. Red means you're hot, black means you're not. So if you look on a rental gun, and this is the standard rental that, all, that just about any field uses. It's a Tipman rental, but it's based on the 98 or the custom 98. This is the gun that the advanced players have, you know, established players keep one of these in their trunk so that when their electronic goes down, they got something to go to. These guns are super duper dependable. They, they have to be because they run with CO2, which is a very dirty gas and it's very inconsistent. If I can knock this gun at all for somebody who's going out for the first time, it's because it does shoot CO2. What does that mean to you? Well, that means that because it's inconsistent, hot weather or cold weather will change the way the pressure is output. When you get this gun, it's going to be chronoed to a certain speed, usually 280 feet per second, which is about 160 miles per hour. But when you get it, it's going to be pre chrono but it doesn't mean that every shot's going to come out at 270 feet or 280 feet per second if that's what it's chronoed to. When you pull the trigger, because of the gas itself being inconsistent, because of the temperatures that can impact it, when you take a shot, one paintball can come out at 280 feet per second and the other can come out at 250. That's called drop-off and sometimes it can shoot even hotter. Uh, and the reason they shoot, shoot at 280 general is because the general rule for most paintball fields is 300. So if they chrono it at two, two, uh, 280, if it does shoot a little hot, it's still within the confines of what it's expected on any field. So when you have your paintball gun, it's already going to be chronoed, and you should always keep it at your side. The next thing you want to do is walk with your fingers off the trigger. If I'm not in game, because one of my tips is always keep your gun up when you're in game, ready to shoot. This way, if you see somebody, you can just pull the trigger as opposed to them having to raise your gun. Well, if you're not in game, it's at your side and your fingers are off the trigger. Now I've put myself into play one more, in one more level of safety. So I've got a barrel cover, got it at my side, got my fingers off the trigger. Think in those threes, okay? Barrel cover, fingers off the trigger, gun at my side. When I'm in game, it's up. The referees will always let you know when you can take the barrel covers off before the game, but as soon as you're shot out, barrel cover on. All right? So you're coming back to staging, your mask is on until you get there, your barrel cover's on until you get there. Well, in fact, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's on when you get there. 
Okay, so we've covered some of the safety issues, and those are going to be primary issues for every paintball field. The next, we're going to go into a little bit of the use of the gun. We kind of touched on it, but let's go a little deeper. So the, the, lo the loader here is going to give you about 180 shots, I believe. Now, if I'm wrong on there, somebody control me or set, set it in the comments. I don't mind. But um, you're going to get about 200, um, sorry, 180 shots. Whatever it is, it's generally on a 9-ounce or 12-ounce molly, one of these babies, you're going to get about two and a half to three of these filled of paintballs before you have to refill this. If you hear a flutter, that means you just ran out of CO2. And paintball fields, their general rule is if you run out of CO2 or paint, you got to leave the field. So if you run out of this, you got to leave. So try to gauge how much paint you have between games so you know when to fill it. Uh, a lot of paintball fields will let you just go fill it between games, but some will would rather you get some use out of it before you return to staging and have them fill it for you. In most places, it's going to be filled. It's going to be filled for free all day. This gun, by the way, can take compressed air. Uh, if you know a little bit more about paintball guns, just so I let you know. So we've covered the CO2 aspect in terms of how you know how you get those refilled and when you know you've run out. But let me get back to that thing about paint and running out of CO2. If you run out of paint, some rule, some places will allow you to stay if you have a friend who can give you some paint or if you can trade a gun with somebody who just got shot out who's walking off the field. You have to check with them about that rule. But in most, like most cases, you should expect, if I run out of CO2 or paint, i got to leave. But let's get into one more thing now about blind firing. Blind firing is when you shoot behind a bunker and you don't see what you're shooting at. That's wrong. It's illegal. You don't do it. Why? Well, there's a huge safety issue there, for one. You could shoot a teammate in the back of the head. You could shoot a referee, and they're not going to like it. They're going to be prone to calling you out more often at the, throughout the day if you're going to be disrespectful towards them. You know, unless you leave them a nice healthy tip, they're, <laughs> they're people too. Long story short, don't blind fire. You must see what you're shooting at. That's, that's the rule. So if I'm going to shoot at something, my head be out, should be out with the gun. I can't put it out there and shoot, even if I think I've got a general understanding where I'm shooting at. It is illegal. They can call you out. They can end your day for it as well. Blind firing? Well, you can. I have a video about blind shooting, which means if there's a player behind a bunker that you can't see, but you know they're in there, you can shoot at them, okay, because you're looking down your gun. So blind shooting and blind firing are two different things. Watch my video on blind shooting if you want to learn a little more. Next, you're going to be issued a mask right away. Oh, let me get let me, one last thing on this. When they hand you this gun at the counter at the beginning of the day, the first thing you're doing, what are you doing? It's going to your side with your fingers off the trigger as you walk back to your picnic table or wherever it is you're staging, okay? Actually, I did miss something else. Oh, there's so much to cover here. See this here? This is probably the rental player's bane. Beside the fact that you have to usually shake this as you shoot it, okay, this here can often not be shut when you think it is. So I've got a video, and this one is really funny. Watch, look for it on my channel. Guy puts some paint in there in the field to play, shuts it, thinks it's shut, it's kind of shut, lifts it like this, paint dumps all over, okay? What you want to do is always listen for the snap, okay? I've always encouraged people that even if you think you heard a snap, give it a slap. Make sure you get that snap because you're carrying around, what, almost $5 in paint in there, all right? It's money. Every shot counts. Also, at places, that if you drop paint on the ground, they don't want you putting it back through their marker. Although this is a durable gun, you will tear it up if you run dirt, actual dirt through it. So when your paint hits the ground, it stays on the ground. You don't put it back in the loader, okay? You want to do that with your own gun, that's your business. And would you? You wouldn't. So don't do it to the paintball fields because the more they have to spend on guns, the more that your paintball costs go up over time. So let's all be on the same team on that one. All right, that's not kind of rah-rah, but you get the idea. All right, back to the mask. Jumping around here. The mask. We know, that's, we know that we keep it on at all times. But when I say at all times, here's the caveat. When you're not in game, this is a single pane lens. Single pane lens have a tendency to fog. All right, it's just what's going to go. You know, it's going to happen. So, what creates that fog? Moisture. When you put your mask up on your head between games, it builds that moisture up. So, between games, get it off your head. Put it with your marker on your table. All right, or keep it on your belt. However it is, get it off your head. Uh, now, does this necessarily mean it's going to happen on, a, you know, on some environments where it's just dry and there's no humidity? True, that could, you know, that could be the case. But uh, rule of thumb, get it off your head. Okay, if you're not playing, get it off your head. Next, a lot of players have issues with these things being loose on their heads. You want this strap here on the apex, okay, at the, at the back of your crown. So when you put it on, it's on the back of your head, and you pull the straps apart. Oh, I just lost my glasses. So you're going to pull the straps apart. That's how you tighten it up. All right. Every mask, 
okay, whether it's a rental mask or something you bought from somewhere else, they're always going to have two clips on them, and you're going to pull the clips apart to tighten it up. Don't pull the clips apart while it's off your head. Put it on your head, on the crown, pull them apart. It's very simple. Makes things and life much easier. All right, we're almost done here. Down to the straps. A lot of fields will give you uh, tape that has no tape on it whatsoever, an actual glue. It's just like, you know, plastic and they'll tie it on. Uh, others will actually have tape that's, you know, like almost like a duct tape or a clear packing tape that's colored and they'll wrap that around you. And other places will give you an actual armband. When they give you an armband, try not to have to do it yourself if you can. can. Try to get a teammate to do it. All right, because when you're doing it by yourself, you don't always get the tightness that you want when you're playing this game. So hand it to a teammate, ask them to armband you. It's very simple. Those are the things that will save you a lot of time and effort and get you through the beginning of your paintball experience. Hopefully this puts you on the right track. I have a whole lot more videos that you can watch that actually show you how to play in-game. So if you're a true beginner and you started with this video, oh boy, do you have a lot of good stuff to come. I've had people come to me for almost four or five years now telling me that they were out there playing with really great players and they were able to finish their games and play throughout the day and they were thankful as can be. And I never really saw that coming and I'm glad I did it and now I'm trying to give back more to everybody in terms of you know, getting people from that beginner stage to the intermediate stage so you can stay in the game so that when you play people like me, you're having fun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I just spent 10 minutes setting you up golden for paintball. You got to do me one solid. You got to like, comment, and share. Deal? Well, I hope so. All right, back to the video, which is over, by the way. You're not miserable. It's too much for any man. Hey, if you're still here, that's because you are a beginner paintballer who is eager to learn more. Well, I'm here to give it to you. Dangermanslayer.com. It's a website that I've built for the community. But if you get to know me, you're going to find out that my calling has been to serve the beginner paintballer. You see, when people start this game, it feels really exclusive. It feels like you can't be a part of it. You see these people dressed up in paintball gear. It's quite intimidating. Well, I'm here to demystify all of that. This game isn't that hard to conquer. All you have to do is learn what type of player you are, the style that you enjoy. Are you a brawler? Are you a tactical player? Hey, you can be both. And if you are, well, then you're a lot like me. And if you go to DangerMansLair.com, you're going to pick up all of these additional skills in a shorter period of time. See, my job is to ramp you up and make it so that you can become an advanced player or an exceptional player in the shortest period of time. So please visit DangerMansLair.com because I built it for the community. You know, when you get there, you can always join the mailing list, and I'll tell you why. When I do contests, I do them right. With a sponsor like Die, I can assure you, good things are coming. So jump on the mailing list. There'll be a newsletter that you won't want to miss. I'll see you there at the site.